We're back. Well, we're not back. I mean, we just started. Welcome to See What Happens, the podcast where we see what happens. Today, we're going to focus on, the well, seeing what happens. And um, we're going to focus on what happens when you have, uh, see what happens with kids, dogs, new pets, and, and Jamie making noise at the microphone. See what happens. It was me. I'm sorry. See what happens. See what happens. You went all set and then see what happened. <laughs> see what happened. That's also my mother. I think uh, mm-hmm. we're going to get David to play a clip again for people who uh, have uh, just coming on to the podcast for the first time. Maybe don't understand where that came from. But see what happens. And uh, we'll play that right now. I'm going to be right back. My mom was very controlling, truthfully. It was good, though. I guess, you know. The only thing I remember from my whole childhood thing I remember most is my mom yelling at me. See what happens? You fell down. See what happens? You're crying. See what happens? You hurt yourself. See what happens? You broke that. See what happens? See what happens? I remember one time we were playing basketball about three miles away from the house. Somebody twisted an ankle. All of a sudden, you hurt. See what happens? Dude, that's your mom on a mountain over there. See what happens? And we're back. See what happens? Okay, so um, see what happens. I'm Rob Schneider, and uh, this is the Schmodcast podcast. And, uh, of course, I'm with uh, the lovely, talented, my co-star in uh, Real Rob on Netflix and also in real life, the great, the lovely Patricia. Schneider. Hi. Thank you for having me again. It's a pleasure. The pleasure is all mine. And then, of course, the less lovely, <laughs> but equally talented, <laughs> slightly um, inebriated, <clears throat> Jamie LaSalle. Good morning. Good morning. How was the morning? How was your morning? It was okay. But I'll be honest with you. I've been having trouble uh, waking up lately. Oh, you ever, yeah? You ever go through phases where you... Sometimes you wake up and you feel, do you guys wake up and you feel energized or do you, like lately I've woken up and felt like I'm in a fog. I was starting to think, I want to ask you guys, Yeah, my kids, I, I have three kids, they mm-hmm. wake up and they just, they're up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. At yeah. what age do you wake up and go, I, I want to go back to sleep? Because I think it-, it 40. It, I no, even, I'm in my 30s and I feel that way too. It just I want to go back on, to sleep. It just depends on the amount of sleep that you're getting. No, I, I think we're a nation- mm-hmm. We're a, we're a species of sleep-deprived animals. That's mm-hmm. what we are at this point. I really feel like um, amazing book you gave me, Sapiens, by the way. Killer book. Yeah. Great one. Uh, brief History of Human human kind. Beings. Human not, kind. That, not that brief, honestly. Or no, yeah. <laughs> exactly, like not that hours. brief. Yeah, it's like 13 <laughs> hours. But, but anyway, so the, uh, the incredible thing, though, is like, I really feel like we're like a nation of self, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's we're doing it ourselves, but we're definitely sleep-deprived. Mm-hmm. And... Um, it could happen, I guess, at any age. I just remember, like, not getting enough sleep, <laughs> you know, just getting up and having to, whether it's a TV show or a movie or whatever, just having to get up for this rehearsal or whatever. And um, now you got to get up, when you're doing stand-up comedy, you got to get up and do radio really yeah. early. And you're getting in late because I want to spend as much time as I can at home. So then I leave, and then you get in really late, wherever city it is, and then you got to get up early and do the promotion or whatever. So it's it's sleep-deprived, but... Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think uh, it's bad. Yeah. I, I think you're, it can't be good for us. No. But I think it gets worse. See what happens? When what? you have kids. That's we, like where the real sleep uh, mm-hmm. you're right. deprivation starts. But that's when the real test is, because we were talking about this the other yeah. day, is that it is anybody can be in a good mood or behave yourself really well when you have enough sleep, mm-hmm. enough exercise. Uh, you know, really good, healthy food, enough sunshine. Uh, and what's it's like, but you're never going to get that. Yeah, at this point, I will just take the sleep, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. That would make me happy. And then, but you're never going to get all that. Yeah. So uh, it's how do you behave um, and how do you handle that as gracefully mm-hmm. as you can True. without any of that stuff? And then see what happens when you don't. Because yeah. sometimes you can't. Like I saw it the other night, it was like a couple of weeks ago. Mm hmm. Where um, Madeline, our two-year-old, mm-hmm. she just would not go to sleep. She just mm-hmm. would not go to sleep. Yeah. And uh, finally, I just said, uh, "Hey, 
you got to go to sleep. You really need to sleep. What I was really telling her was, I really need to sleep. Mm -hmm. Right. I really, I really need to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. See what happens. See what happens. <laughs> See what happens when you have kids. So what well, do you, you got? Three kids though that don't want to have to sleep. Do they sleep at different times. Your kids. Not only do they sleep at different times. Yeah, I'm alone. For anyone that doesn't realize, like I'm, I don't have like the the wife part. Mm-hmm. So it's like one dude that doesn't know much, trying to put three kids to bed at different times because they're three, seven, and ten. Yeah, and so they do like the three year old goes to bed at like a little bit earlier. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know you have to somehow do that with. The other two make a noise in the other room. It is, uh, I haven't slept in a really long, like it's, mm-hmm. I haven't had a good night's sleep. You had an yeah. opportunity to get a good night's sleep last night. Yeah, I did and just couldn't, couldn't you lock didn't. it in. But you know what, the, that's the problem because like, for instance, now uh-huh. you don't have your kids here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're not sleeping good anyways. Yeah. So what's happening? You know what I was I was listening to this uh, woman Brené Brown the well, other don't day. Don't listen to those. See what happens when you listen to those <laughs> things. No, and she was just explaining how we put so much pressure on ourselves mm-hmm. because we always think we don't get enough sleep, mm-hmm. and and you don't get enough sleep because when you go to bed you're thinking I didn't do enough today. Totally. I could have done more. And then it's always like that feeling of lacking everything. Like I didn't get yeah, no, but it's, enough it's of this, of enough mental. of that, and blah, blah, blah. You can't, it's, there's a sufficient amount. And you know, the thing about it, why well, you should just, you know, relax is also your body's going to, when your body's exhausted and needs to sleep, it's going to do it. Whether you want it to or not, it's going to sleep. Better hope it's not on the back, <laughs> on the road somewhere. You're very on, good on at that, by the, the way. You're great. You're like a bat. At the, and at the relaxing thing, he's so good. Because I feel like me and your wife, Patricia, I feel like if we had a band, we'd be called the overthinkers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like oh. just laying there, playing out. Yeah, like different scenarios. scenarios. Yeah. But you, Rob, you have this, I don't know what Denial. it is. Denial. <laughs> <laughs> self lying, self loathing lying. You're, I mean, yeah, I want to know about that because I was mm. I was just um, talking to Jamie about it. Mm-hmm. What's that? The, the overthinking part. Yes, I am an overthinker. Yes, and and sometimes when something is really good and I'm super happy about it, yeah. then immediately I mm. stop enjoying myself because I I start creating these scenarios <laughs> where like everything is gonna go downhill yep. and. It, and it's like I can't help it, but then I have to go back and think like, no, it's gonna be okay. But meanwhile, I'm fighting with myself, thinking yeah. like it's awesome, and then like oh shit, and then it's awesome again. And totally. So, so I don't see you doing that. So you you don't do that, yeah. or you just control it better. You don't say it. Well, I think you just have to be um, as much as you can active in preventing that disaster or or whatever, or just like if you're doing. And but seriously, if you're making the progress that you need to be doing then is there's no really need to panic because truthfully like and it's taken me years and years of um of to understand the basic principles of like uh, uh basically like a philosophy of s- interpreting this whole experience of life and the universe in a way that you don't go insane and you don't spend too much time uh you know being negative or or thinking about the end because you know supposedly which is not necessarily not necessarily the case but man human beings sapiens um we are the supposedly the only animal that can actually uh envision and look into the future and see our own grave and that has um horrible uh, repercussions for um how you can not live in the present which is the only time that's real and maybe then live too much in the past and regret. So there's that that thing. And but so you think about it because you know you have to have an interpretation so you don't go crazy. So what I've tried to do is have a more focused thing. It's like uh, how you know it's not everything you want right now. But if you had everything you want right now, that wouldn't be enough either. Right. Like I have extremely mm-hmm. wealthy friends uh, named Adam Sandler. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but, but I have, you know, other friends who are bankers and stuff, mm-hmm. and there's not a gigantic sense of satisfaction. So the idea that even if you had that, I mean, I think it would be fantastic if you mm-hmm. were completely had enough money, whatever. But it's like for those people, it's never enough. You still got to do something. So if if you can categorize things of that you want in life as something that is uh, is going to give you that. You, that is, you know, that sense of happiness, that sense of satisfaction, that sense of like, oh, a relief or whatever. It's an illusion. 
and that's not that restlessness that you're talking about that you're seeking isn't that it's something else okay so then what is that and then how do you deal with that well there's a restlessness and I, and I think what you can do is focus on uh, you know what is joyful and like what like little kids are a great reminder of that so that you're always doing something fun like you can't even get like uh, kids you come over walk get over here they'll just start dancing on the way there mm-hmm. you know they just it's a very a joyfulness thing so in some ways it's an unlearning process to get back to that mm-hmm. but then you know there are things you have to be concerned about you can't be just a freeloading like i'll just do whatever i mean you have to so there's that the what people tend to focus on is to instead of being like so loosely not connected and and, and being uh relaxed too relaxed about stuff that that's a, a an option too people tend to say well i'll be more conservative i'll be more and i'll worry or i will stress about things and one of the things in john cleese's books which is really interesting um he talks about his mother and um I'm not sure if he told me this personally, but like and he, he talks about it in his book. Um, but the, when he told me this in person, he said that his mom, he would get with his mother and uh, go to her house. And she said, John, I'm, these are the things I'm worried about. I'm worried about this. And he would go over, she would go over her list of worries. Hmm. And like, I'm worried about this, worried about the money, worried about this house and these things. And... You know, I would just try to, you know, uh, re-condition my brain because I do have the potential to freak out all the time. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that what I try to remind myself is the interpretation of when you used to freak out about something when you're like nine years old. Mm -hmm. Or like when Miranda goes, she took my toy. You know, and and my little girl like, she took it. But yeah, I was playing with it. Well, you know, uh, and then or somebody breaks your toy and it seems really like a big deal at the time. And then you realize, you know. A little later, it's not a big deal. And just like, you know, like um, when when you're going through stuff, like in your 30s or whatever, or you're 40 and you're going through a divorce, that seems like the end of the world. It seems like this. Is what, and then, you, you know, a year later, you're, you're, huh, you calm down about this. And right, I, or even five and a half months. <laughs> <later>. <laughs> but I think in your 80s, I think you're going to look back at some of the problems you have now and go, what was I worried about? For sure. So, Remember we talked about, I told you, my son got. So that's the idea is to get to that place, try to have some. Uh, an interpretation of this thing and this experience and right and then maybe it's a calming factor and and i just think like that woman the beautiful woman I'm sorry to interrupt no you life, but the um remember the beautiful woman at that zen monastery we visited in uh yes in, in, in Ta- taiwan in taiwan it was in sun moon lake mm-hmm. there's a modern zen monastery and the master of the place was a woman mm-hmm. she was the uh the one in charge of the whole place and and uh we said we said we were showing our respect saying hi how beautiful everything was here and it was and then we said it was a very beautiful necklace i mean a very beautiful bracelet bracelet mm-hmm. bracelet you have and what did she do oh she gave it to me wow i would have told her i liked your dress <laughs> <laughs> no because we, you know we were we want we wanted to buy some of those beads and they don't sell them so they cool. don't sell anything so she i liked it she gave it to it's me like right an there. attachment like a non-attachment yeah she just said nothing well not it's not here take it she just mm-hmm. here she took it off and handed it to you which was like i mean literally brought you to tears wow rob you have a beautiful wallet yeah i did i cried yeah oh wow i don't remember that sweet you, well i mean you were very you got emotional Oh, okay. Well, I said brought you to tears. I didn't mean you're weeping. It means like she hit, she flung them in your face and <laughs> knocked, knocked your eyeball out or something. <laughs> no, but but it was a beautiful gesture, wasn't it? It was beautiful, yes. It was also just one of those things that you just, because uh, we tend to not want to give stuff away. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> especially you. But uh, <laughs> but let's go back to Jamie's the story. Jamie. He was going to tell us a story. Oh, I was just going to say, it was back to your point about not worrying about things, mm-hmm. like looking back and realizing how small those things were. Remember I yeah. told you my kid, uh-huh. who, when he was like three, he was sobbing and I couldn't console him and I finally got out of him that, and I thought he had hit his head or like mm-hmm. was hurt. I mean, I, he barely yeah. ever cries. It was late. He was tired. And I said, what's the matter, buddy? And he was like, I can't find, and he held up this Lego guy and he said, I can't find the Lego guy's hat. Wow. And I it, remember and that. A certain yeah. hat. Mm-hmm. That went with this Lego guy. And as I watched him like sobbing, and then he like, I finally got him to sleep. I was like, all this stuff, like my divorce Lego hat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Seems so gigantic at the time. Yeah. And I mean, the Lego hat. Right. But you then, know. but you're right. It's a Lego hat. It's a Lego hat. 
That's a great. You do talk about that when you meet people and stand up and stuff like that. I don't, just because of the lack of punchlines. <laughs> <laughs> but if I could put some in there. No, but, it, but it's true. But yeah, no, people absolutely. Can, maybe, you know, that's a good lesson for people because people need to hear that because they, um, I just think that they um, they forget that, you know, that they're part of this thing, the, this whatever experience this is. You know, you're, you're, you can't, you know, people don't think, they go. They, people can go a whole day without thinking that. They're breathing in oxygen every breath. And that's outside of them. They're taking in this food that's not separate from them, that that becomes part of them as well. Not that this thing, and and, uh, and uh, they can go all day not realizing that they're an integral part of the whole mm-hmm. thing, that they're, you know. Yeah, no, they, that's crazy. And, 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 but it, and it's, it's true. But it's also, though, it's great to be in the moment, and it's great to get lost. There's also this terrific uh, Japanese um, Zen uh, Buddhist who said this wonderful thing, said, I find myself attracted, uh, attached to things and people, and I've never been happier. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, because the, I, the idea is to not not be so attached to things. Because when it gets mm-hmm. taken away, even life itself, you know, the idea is to not get so attached to it. And I just think again, it's not like it, it's there's no specific. Um, the thing about Zen Buddhism, there's no specific. Um, Way of doing it. Or? Yeah, or mm-hmm. if somebody says that they're a phony, if they say it's a. You know, let's just like Buddhism itself. It's uh, it's an a spoken, um, you know, religion. It's not necessarily like you, there was. You know, there are writings and long for scrolls, but to get to the essence of what the thing is, is it the essence? Is there is no essence to it? You know, and I think if uh, and that's the the idea to it. You know, if you think about like on a bigger scale or whatever, you know. Um, is the the essence of this table is that it's mostly emptiness, you know. It's but if you could, so ideally, if you could figure out what the the scholars say, if you could, you could, if you could align near atoms uh, and molecules uh, in accordance to this, you could walk through this table. Mm. That's what they say, and then you you give them a couple two hundred fifty dollars for the weekend, and then you go home. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but it is good, and that's what's great about having those kids, though, is because it's a constant reminder of like. Uh, uh, the yin and yang, how happy they swing out, so happy, mm-hmm. and they swing out so crazy sad because they can't find the Lego hat. Right. And then uh, the idea of like, which is like Zen Buddhism and Buddhism is the middle way. Don't swing out either way. Mm-hmm. And how? Uh, but that's that's the part. Like how how did you achieve that? Because you're really good at not overthinking. And I consider myself like I'm a positive person. I don't think I'm too negative. Mm-hmm. However, I I find myself scaring. Myself with scenarios like, sometimes. Like worst case scenarios? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. And I don't say it because I don't like to be that you, negative person, but I think about okay, it but sometimes. You know, when it does happen, there's exercises that you can do. It's just like if you're swinging out. I mean, that's why I say try mm-hmm. to getting back into the middle. What's well, because I used to swing out a lot more, like okay. in a radical way. Mm-hmm. Like just, the, not, I didn't like, I was those friends who I, who I started with who swung out on like in drugs and the, the, the mm-hmm. up and downs of it were like, Remarkable, but that's what they were going through. The idea is to not swing out, but the technique that you can do, if you're worried about something, if there is something that is said, take it all the way to its end. Take it all the way, just, just if it's just I like, do that easily. Speed it up, speed it up, speed it up, speed it up, mm-hmm. speed it up, all the way to the end, and then, and then, and then you realize there's really nothing to be worried about. When you get to its end mm-hmm. and its zenith, whatever it is, because there's really nothing that you can do about that. The idea that you're in control of your life, again, is an illusion. Mm-hmm. It's basically... And not that to say you, you don't have, there are personal choices, but if you really looked back at the whole thing, like I remember this is, you know, there's this uh, 50th anniversary of landing on the moon coming up. And, uh, you know, the, the thing it got to uh, was a very interesting comment from the, the astronauts was when they look back on Earth, they didn't see like several things. They saw one thing. They just saw like the, mm-hmm. the world, you know. Yeah, you're and right. So, so there's a unified thing. So the, the idea that this of the separateness is like, and the idea that you can control your life. I mean, if you think about this, we're on this like, this this like wet orb that is like uh, circling around a fireball at uh, I don't know at the exact rate of speed, but it's pretty it's pretty intense. And um, you know, the idea that you can control anything is like the same thing when you're, you know you're on a plane, we're flying all the time, right? And there's like uh, turbulence. What do you do? You grab the Right, ladies, the, yeah. sit next to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you grab think. the hammer. Like it, you're in it, control, but you're not. It does anything. It doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. So you think, and I, I, and in some ways, um, you know, from from sleep deprivation or whatever, you can allow yourself because sometimes your brain gets too um, 
not enough sleep, too much sleep, whatever. It's good to mix it up a little bit because there's a structural side of your brain and there's the creative side of your brain. And sometimes the structural side of your brain is the the one that is really needs order, that really needs the structure, that really wants to be in control, and that mostly is control. And when that's too tired, or when it takes a while, it takes a while for it to wake up, you got the creative side that can sneak in there and do some fun stuff. And and so sometimes it's good to get out of uh, the way of the or to, your to, schedule. Yeah, mm-hmm. to to get out, or even like just deep breathing can can can. Uh, can relax the structural side of your brain. That's a technique that can do it. Exercise, any mm-hmm. type of uh, meditation. And meditation is just focusing on one thing. It's exclusion of everything else. That's all meditation is. It's not this complicated thing. If you're going for a run and you're just focusing on your run, that's a meditation. There's this um, There's this one that's called uh, uh, Jack. Um, the, medica- the meditation is... Uh, um, it's called oh god if I, but but it's basically it's like there is a I think I might have it here it is um I I use this app for meditation it's a inside timer you recommended that to me yeah yeah I love inside timer yes what is that tell me it's pretty good it's a free app and you you can yes. basically put in like what type of Meditation, you want guided mm-hmm. or just just music? Yeah, and you can say like stress, anxiety, sleep, yes. and you put it on, and it works pretty damn good, right? It, it works good. I started doing it like um, you know a few weeks ago, and I've slept really good. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is the the house that Jack built. Meditation. Mm. Um, there is a and the, turn off for a minute. See if people fall asleep in their car. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, no, 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 no. It's like there's, a, I, I don't know exactly, mm-hmm. but it's, it's, there's, it's the house that Jack built meditation. There is a lifting of the foot. There is a uh, indication of a lifting of the foot. There is a real, wait, wait a second, I'm going to screw this. So here. it means like if you fall asleep, you're not meditating. No, it's just. So what, you have to lift your foot to make sure that you are awake and you're mm-hmm. aware of that and you're in control of that. Or what? No. Oh, sorry. Look it up. I completely misunderstood that. Oh, for one. <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, the house that Jack built. Let me look it up. This is going to be good. This is going to be worth it. You'll see. So, 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 what meditation are you guys doing now? I do a lot of sleep ones, but I found that I'm building an immunity. Mm-hmm. I'm building up an immunity to the sleep meditation because you're just too tired. Almost like a sleeping pill, though, where I know the words so well. Oh. That it used to knock me out, and now. No. Got, I know oh. what the guy's going to say next. I wonder oh, really? if I need a new one. Maybe. You, what are you, you listening to? You can mix it up. Well, um, I don't have the membership because you have to pay for the membership. Did you pay for the membership? I didn't even know there was one. That's how frugal I am. Okay. Okay. Okay, I got it. <laughs> There's a membership that I didn't pay for. So I just get the five-minute meditations. And the eight minute is like the uh, longest. But for sleeping, they have like a half an hour or yeah. one to hour. Turn off the noise because there's so much noise. You got noise on your phone. You keep mm-hmm. the phone next to the bed, and then there's mm-hmm. the TV, and then there's the kids, and then you got to get you got to drive somewhere. There's the noise when you're going like uh, in 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 your car, and then mm-hmm. like at work, and then there's your family, and you have to turn off the noise. And the best a good way to do that is just you know. But this is the house that Jack built, and this is um uh, somebody. Some people call it the Southern Buddhist practice. Mm-hmm. And then he's like he walks, and he says he, you go for a walk, mm-hmm. and you say to yourself. There is, and this is Alan Watts says it. There is a lifting of the foot. There is a perception of the lifting of the foot. There is a tendency towards the perception of the feeling of the lifting of the foot. Then he finally says, "There is a consciousness of the tendency of the perception of the feeling of the lifting of the foot." So basically, he's just like, "What is really happening right now mm-hmm. in your body? Mm-hmm. You're going for a walk." <laughs> Mm-hmm, okay. Concentrate on that and stop turning, turn off the noise, mm-hmm. turn off your phone. Well, you have to read the meditations so you have your phone. With yeah. You, but, but, no, but, that, but that's like, yeah. a, I mean, I, I really. But you know what? The, that works really good for you. Yeah. Because for Rob to sleep, he needs to put on earplugs because he blocks the noise and you block the light. Yeah. I don't mind noise and I don't mind wow. light. Actually, I what I've noticed what? recently is that I enjoy. The noise for really? sleeping. I mean, not like crazy noise. But no, but you, you can sleep with music. 
Yeah, but if I put I like can't. like nice like you know like the sounds from that inside timer thing, yeah. or if I listen to a uh, guided sleep oh, meditation, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. It actually works better See, than for, just putting on the earplugs and and sleeping. I'm that way. For me, you can do that. I need the uh, the ambient noise. By the way, did you guys know Alan Watts? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, brilliant guy but his friends used to hate going to the mall with him because it would take him like 30 minutes to get from one store to the other <laughs> they're like dude put one lift the foot you want to go to fucking Cinnabon Alan <laughs> it's the lifting of the foot I am lifting the foot it's the consciousness of the lifting of the Cinnabon Alan we're still at the entrance we've been I, here a half hour <laughs> I am taking out my wallet there is this <laughs> consciousness of taking out my wallet there is the co- I already paid for you there is the putting back the wallet into the pants there's a line. There is an idea. Me. There's an idea of money. <laughs> the idea that I could pay for this. I already paid for it. Let's get out of here. <laughs> there was a perception that I could be paying of the wallet with the. No, but that's that's very interesting. I mean, I think I don't I don't know. Like I wish I could measure somehow but it's not about the amount the month. amount of overthinkers mm. and the amount of people who don't care at all mm-hmm. and the amounts of people who are like in the middle. You know because. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Because we don't know. I will say, I have an old friend of mine, my old boss, um, Jim Downey, the great uh, Saturday Night Live writer. He said something to me. He said, I think dumb, dumber people are happier. Because hmm. they're just, um, so maybe I'm just a dumber person. But like, I do think that like, if you overthink things or like too many things going on, or you've, uh, if your brain capacity is at a really high level a lot, it's, it's just, I don't know if it makes you happier. You know, I don't know. Do you I, think it overthinking might make you work harder? Sometimes I wonder if I didn't have the worry and the doomsday scenario, maybe. if I wouldn't get up early and. I think work. we trick ourselves into doing that, though, don't we? Yeah. When you feel like you use that as a, I mean, like um, like a crutch. Like there's some you know you don't have to certain things you don't you you wouldn't have to do, but you make yourself do it, and I think like you have to come up with reasons for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, like I don't think I'd be working as hard if I didn't have to. I don't know. So I make I have to find a created a in some ways, I have to be honest with myself, maybe I created a scenario where I would have to continue to keep working because I like it. Mm-hmm. And so I, and I have to take I really do think that you have to like you can say whatever you want about uh what situation you got yourself into, but you got yourself into it somehow. Mm-hmm. And so the idea that um you had nothing to do with it or it was an accident, and everybody thinks it's something that happened to them. Nobody thinks that they're the integral part or they're the one driving it. They just assume these things. And I think I don't, I don't buy, I don't, that I don't believe anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That I think like... Um, like everything know, is cause and effect? Not necessarily cause and effect, because that's also, to me, that's um, kind of, uh, in, in, in a way, it, it takes away people's um, desire because it's like this is just happening to them. So I think it's a combination of you want this, you feel like you need this, and mm-hmm. that could be a positive or it could be a negative mm-hmm. thing. You just is something that you have to take responsibility for what you created. Yeah. For what your life is. And yeah. in some ways you needed that, you wanted that. Mm-hmm. And then when you get bored of it, then then stop doing it. I mean, mm-hmm. in in a way that like, you know, that that again Alan Watts talks about, which is very true. It's like, you know, you're con- you don't realize that you're in this flow of a river all the time. You just, you're flowing with the stuff. You don't think like, you know, there's literally like, it's like a whirlpool. It's not like one thing. You could say that's the whirlpool, but it's not a solid thing. It is, or, or it's not a constant. It's a constant moving. And so in the same way that we are, there's a constant food and liquids and stuff mm-hmm. and air mm-hmm. and everything, but we're just constantly flowing through us at all the time. So we're also our own whirlpool. So the idea that you are, um, you know, stuck or is an, again as an illusion. So the, you, if you want to get unstuck, just like if you're in that, um, you know, in this river, you move towards, you know, move towards the shore or whatever. But I think people do find um, uh, themselves getting unhappy or feeling worried by thinking that they can control or should be able to control exactly what's happening. And I'm not saying you don't have some things in your life you can, mm-hmm. but the overall picture is to. Um, 
to reinterpret what you think is happening in your life and then mm-hmm. and find a way to be happy with that because you can find you could be doing exactly what you want what mm-hmm. you've always wanted to do and that could maybe doesn't bring you any pleasure and because maybe that was just you were indoctrinated into thinking well that's what I need to get and so you go through life and a lot of people do it's like well you know once I get into the right school then that's going to be great because my parents would get you in the right school and then you get out of that school I got to have the right degree you know and then I said then I then I'm going to get out of then then it's going to be so you feel like this thing is coming mm-hmm. and then I'm going to go and then we're going to move. Uh, get this job and I got that job and oh, okay this thing all this time is building up and then it's going to come and then it's going to be great and then um, I'm going to get married and then we'll have and then with the right woman and the right that we'll live in the right neighborhood and that's going to and you're just waiting for this thing yeah, to come yeah that one does not work <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, and then you're waiting for this thing and you wake up one day and you're like you know what the, uh, I don't feel any different so there's this kind of cultural lie mm-hmm. that you're supposed to, and that's to so, get to something or achieve something. Yeah, that's what's so beautiful about that movie. I mean, the the book *Sapiens*, mm-hmm. which is like uh, I heard everything like a movie, but like is that it gives you it breaks down that um, that there are misperceptions, or I should say, like what man was trying to get to, which totally makes sense, was in direct conflict with nature. Instead of being like, um, as they still talk about that, like they conquered Everest. Right. Didn't conquer any. What do you, what's nothing there to conquer? It's, you're part of the same. Right. You're part of this. And nature. Everest is winning, by the way. <laughs> yeah, last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, I did see that. I didn't you know. Truthfully, oh my goodness, like I know what you're died. talking about. Jesus Christ, you're right. Like I saw, did that seem? Did that seem like? Not, I mean, to me, that seemed the most unpeaceful. The most un like. I mean, I know it's a hell of an accomplishment to to make it to Mount Everest. I get that. It's the highest peak in the mm. world. But didn't you see? There's a line of 300 people. Trying to get up there. I mean, he's like, excuse me, pardon me, pardon me. Get up there. Yeah. Okay, I'm up there. Okay, take a picture. Okay, I'm going back down. To me, that that's the same bullshit to me. As, as if I, you know, do think that that's going to change you or that's going to get someplace. If you do it for the joy of doing it, then I don't have nothing against that. But if you do it so you can, at, you're at dinner and you can bring that up, you know, because you can say that at dinner. To me, it's like, I don't get that that whole idea of the bucket list. I mean, if, you do, if you're enjoying it, enjoy it. But the idea that uh, you could just knock it off to say that you did that. You know, it just doesn't mean, give it doesn't give any sense for me satisfaction. Yeah, I I, I agree. You with cl- that. you climb. What do you do? You get up to Crown Everest. Okay, you're on top. Okay, okay, let's go back down. Right. I don't. It's mm-hmm. me. And mm-hmm. then the people. Then they drop dead and they go down because it's, you know. Yeah, and that one is you're not supposed to be up there. So dangerous. Like you have families and stuff, and you you know mm-hmm. left back. And there's what was it thirteen people in the last week? Or last two? week. It's insane. And, wow. and, and and it wasn't. Uh, and it was actually really really good weather. It's just, it's just you don't have enough oxygen up there, and there's like a mm-hmm. traffic jam. Can you imagine a traffic jam? That photograph was unbelievable. What's the most, uh, the closest you've ever come to uh, to death dying? to dying? Yeah, like the most risky thing. It's so funny that you mentioned that. Um, not hilarious, funny, not a ha ha funny, but it's just funny because I just uh, made that realization two days ago when I was um, in the pool, and I remember very specifically. Um, the closest I ever came to dying was uh, when I uh, was I was just floating on my back, and I was trying to teach the kids like, "Hey, if you ever get in trouble, always float on your back, and just it'll take less energy. You'll get your more energy back if you're ever swimming out there. Just let the tide take you out. Get on your back, float. Use as little energy as you can. Just your hands, just your hands to kind of get you afloat, you know, and then you know." Get your back straight and get your back curved up and your stomach up so that you can uh, float and then just wait till you have a little bit of energy and then try to swim in. If that doesn't let you go in that way, swim in another way, but don't get to the point where you're exhausted. I was in Thailand doing a shitty movie <laughs> and I was, uh, you know, uh, and I, I just throw, just as a joke to make the crew laugh, I, I threw off, I, I, I just jumped with, with my clothes on, I just jumped in the water and I had no idea, like I didn't in the see ocean. It. In the ocean, just jumped right in the ocean, right on the on the beach, and I and the whole time we were there that day, I didn't realize no one was swimming for a reason because there's a monster riptide, and so I just I swam out into that, and then I I tried to get back and I couldn't get back. I tried to get back, tried to get back to it, and finally, I just found myself getting yeah. exhausted. And luckily, I grew up swimming in the ocean in below San Francisco, which was really cold. This was warm at least in Thailand. And so in Phuket, Thailand. So I just took off all my clothes down to my underwear and it said floated. Could be, were people watching you? Did anyone think about saving you? Or 75 people on the beach just watching me struggle for wow. 45 minutes till I got in. And I got in and I was completely exhausted. What I did was I floated. I said, I'm just going to get my energy back. And I tried to come in again. It didn't work. 
So I said, I'm just going to float, float. And I said to them to try to get in several times. And I said, I'm just going to float until I get all my energy back as much as I can. And then finally, I just went as far to the right as I could. And then I made a mad dash for it. Wow. And I got in and I literally collapsed on the beach. And you know what happened? The costume lady said, what happened to your costume? I said, I my costume. Yeah, it's not gonna match. We don't have things like that. Not gonna match. How about your? De- how about a? How about a dead actor out <laughs> yeah, there? That looks totally different. That? Oh, yeah, that one is definitely not gonna match. But uh, but it, the the key to that. Yeah, what is the key for anybody out there listening that may be drowning right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Okay, pull over on the car. <laughs> empty the water out of your car. No, you want to <laughs> you want to just arch your back okay. and like spread your legs out a little bit. Get your arms all Sounds the way. Like something else. And then um, and then just float until you get your energy back. That's what I mean. That I, that saved my life. That's like, how about you? Do you, do you? Is there a specific time you think? I of? have this. It's it's almost. It's not as good of a story, but I was in Hawaii with uh, my family, and we went out on this beach. And I took I had both my kids, and we yeah. go out. And uh, my son's like two years old at the time. The mm-hmm. Beach in Hawaii, and my son's like, Dad, it's a, like, what's up with those people? And I look over, and uh, there's just like an old couple. Guy just has his balls out, balls and dick. <laughs> it's a uh, woman has her has her you, breasts have out. You choked right? on this and almost died. Where is this going? Where is this going? Oh no, the death part comes out. But nude beach, we had yeah. no idea. Everyone, it's like a pretty desolate. Only like like six. This is a near there. death experience. Yeah, this guy. I swear. And um, so we see these two naked guys, yeah. and they're these guys are in better shape, and they're totally naked. And they're together, and they're wearing just snorkel gear. <laughs> so like they have just penises out, but then like flippers mm-hmm. and like a face mask. Yeah. So why wouldn't they just wear a pair of shorts then? Yeah, I don't know. What, what was the where's the thrill there? Yeah, and they go and then they so they go. Oh, they t- they turn to us and uh, they go. Hey, there's like dolphins out there, yeah. mm-hmm. and they're those spinner dolphins that are like really friendly with people. So We're they're talking go, to you while they <laughs> excuse me while they have their dicks out. Two naked men, and I'm I got my kids with me and everything, and so they go out to see the dolphins, and yeah. they're like swimming with these dolphins. And I remember thinking, I hope the dolphins. Don't think we're all like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I got pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so we all got excited. I remember my wife, mm-hmm. she's a pretty good swimmer. She th- went out there and swam. And, you, you know, you take going out is easy. Yeah. Going out is easy. Like, all of a sudden, you're with the dolphins. And then my brother in law goes out there. Yeah. And I go, I'm going to go. Hey, hey. And I just, and I was, I, I got out there so fast. Where was this? This is in Ma- maybe uh, Oahu. Okay. And I got out there and uh, it just suddenly hit me. Like, I'm not a good swimmer. Mm hmm. I'm in pretty bad shape right now. Like I don't. I should try to get back. Yeah, we're so far away, and I just couldn't get back, man. And, so what'd you do? And then it's different than your scenario because like nobody knew. There was no one watching. Like I remember looking up as I was feeling like I was going to drown mm-hmm. and watching my sister in law just like folding the beach towel, mm-hmm. getting sand off it. No, you but know? nobody did anything. They just were literally watching on the beach as I was like struggling. You had, you had a whole crowd that yeah. knew you were struggling. They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. Mine was more like no, I it was, was too dangerous I was to go so in. alone. At least you would have had like a nice audience. This is very similar to when we do stand up yeah. proportionally. How many people would have witnessed? So, well, my so what did you do? How did you? How did you uh... <laughs> I did the same thing where I just said like I'm gonna rest up and I'm gonna fucking go for it. I mean as hard as I can. And so I rested up and then I you did rested it. up by how? I just like floated. I think I floated on my back. Yeah. For a while, I took some breaths and then just went for it. And I mean collapsed. Oh yeah, when on I got the beach. yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Then my wife's still out there. Oh no! And I go, I gotta let her know. So I start waving, like you guys got to start trying to get mm-hmm. in. And then they swam in, and they were like, "What?" Like it wasn't. So you got stuck in a riptide. You see, the water that's coming in needs to go back out, and it doesn't. I'm just, it's not the stuff on top that's dangerous. It's stuff you can't see. It's like a treadmill, right? Like I remember swimming and just being oh, yeah, like, yeah. "I'm further away." Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's why you have to go. You know, you got to go parallel to the beach and go find a way to that to go in. I did not do that. And then well, I remember- I know, but most people don't. That's how people drown is when they get completely exhausted and they can't swim anymore. That's why you can never get completely exhausted. God. Yeah, and I, I read in the we had this you know I had Hawaii another travel situation. guide. It said. Uh, more drownings on that beach. anywhere in Hawaii yeah. on that beach that time. Oh, ago. really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. But I, I, you know, the one thing, like, when I was a kid surfing, it was, um, you know, the, the best thing about it with cold water surfing, you always have a wetsuit. So whenever I would get, um, when I, whenever, you know, we would be going in decent sized waves and you get caught in what they call the washing machine, basically it just, it just, you crash in the wave and it's just water, you know, but like, it spins you around and it takes you up and then down and up and down. It's the most I've ever seen a guy was seven times. <laughs> it's taken up and down. Oh my up and, down. God. and you just grab a breath when you, when you can get to that top and then you come back down. And you know, and the thing about it, I just remember seriously, was like uh, 
just laughing like, oh my goodness, I'm really stuck in this and just relaxing about it. And then usually just let, because you don't know where up or down is and it's really murky water. So luckily if you got a wetsuit, you just let go and then float. And then, then you're going to float. So uh, you, that's the direction. Because otherwise, if you don't know which way you're going, you could be swimming the wrong way. That's frightening. Oh, God. Water, that scares me. Yeah. Drowning. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but there were people like who weren't, uh, d- you know, there was a very famous Hawaiian surfer who came out uh, who was a big wave surfer, and he wasn't used to cold water, and he didn't make it. Damn. And those big, uh, those big, um, uh, big wave down there. Damn. Down there in Half Moon Bay, the big wave. Patricia, do you have a near near death? Uh, you you're not you don't uh, love swimming too much. I right? don't love swimming in the ocean because I had a bad experience, but I don't think it was like close to dying. Mm-hmm. I think it was just like you know, also very tired of uh, trying to get out. But I didn't think I was gonna die mm-hmm. completely. But you have like a real respect for the water. Yes, after that, I think I I felt like I don't want to do it anymore because I didn't enjoy that so getting back to what alan wants in the uh the meditation which is the house that jack built he says and so with everything he does like as with the foot lifting the foot he knows that he does it he is self-aware this is tricky of course it's not easy to do but as he practices i'm going to let the cat out of the bag which i suppose i shouldn't do but you will find that there are so many things to be aware of at any given moment in what you're doing that at best you can only pick out one or two of them that's the first thing you'll find out. Ordinary conscious awareness is seeing the world with blinkers on. So basically... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I know. I ha- I do have one that it could have been easily my death. Was that? Me falling hard on the ice on your head? No. What? I had a motorcycle accident. <laughs> oh, that's right. When I was a... a uh, probably it was like 19. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was in my house. What do you think made the difference to surviving that, the motorcycle accident? Uh, I don't know. So you don't. Even I don't even know what. And you should have been driving a motorcycle in your house. <laughs> That's one. Super I wasn't dangerous. even driving. Here, here's the thing. I I was in my house, and a friend of mine got a, this new motorcycle. Those like um, those big ones. The uh, Harley. No, not Rock a Harley, rocket? but the the ones that are very fast. Actually, mm-hmm. what were the was the that kind of motorcycle? Like a crotch Japanese like one. A katana yeah, like or a a Suzuki or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Anyways. No, there's a lot of different fast bikes. Um, what's the one that starts with the D that really fast? Ducati? Ducati, yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, like like a real big motorcycle. See what happens. See what happens. <laughs> exactly. So anyways, he comes to my house and uh, with his motorcycle. And he's like, look what, he just got it. Mm-hmm. Right? And his older brother, he also used to bike a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, so anyways, so I didn't, even, I didn't even tell my parents. Because he was like, you want to go for a ride? And I was like, yeah. And how old are you? Like 19. Oh, boy. So here's Patricia jumping on the motorcycle. We both didn't even put on helmets. We go wow. for We go Whoa. for a spin. Dumb. Super dumb. And then on the way back home, I used to live close to a lake. So, but there was like a, uh, you know, like a two-way kind of like a street. Mm-hmm. And this guy in a pickup truck oh, no. didn't see us. Oh, boy. So he switched lane, oh boy. and he hit us oh. right where we were. So we he hit he actually hit the car. Well, we hit the motorcycle. We, we crash. No, we crash into the back of his pickup truck. Oh no! And I flew out. Oh my! You didn't God. hit your head though, huh? I didn't, but but I don't you even know how that hip. happened. You landed on your hip. I landed on my hip because I and you slid. I, I I I didn't break it, but I cracked uh, it. Cracked. Fracture, I, yeah. I, I I fractured. No, no, no. It wasn't a fracture. It was just like a, a hairline crack. Hairline fracture, they call it. Okay, well, that. <laughs> and uh, and I remember that I hit my mouth Ooh. Oh, God. because I had blood in my mouth. But you're As lucky. you're flying, you must be like, I'm going to die, right? As you're you know what, air? though? I didn't even think about it. Like It feels like it, everything goes in a slow motion yeah. because that's how I remember falling. I'm, I have another moment now. I'm just brought back to me. And I remember that I was just like falling and hitting myself on the ground. And my friend, he actually, he fell right on his ass Mm. Like like the motorcycle kind of like took off after that he fell and he actually fractured his hips, his hip. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, so I remember like this guy. I don't even think he saw what happened like properly. He just kept going. He just left. 
So a couple of cars, you know, like started pulling over and then this beautiful family, they had a baby. So it was a couple and a baby. They took you to the hospital? They, no, they asked me because the ambulance came, they took my friend and they said, you want to go in the ambulance? And I said, no, can you drive me home? Because I, I feel like trouble. my parents are going to get freaked out right. if they call them from the hospital and I don't want to get in trouble. Sure. Yeah. So I went home. I remember I went back home. My mom wasn't there because she went to the grocery store or somewhere. Thankfully. My dad was there. And I remember that I went to the bathroom. I washed my face because I had like dirt and blood. Mm -hmm. So I washed my face. And I remember my dad was at his office. So yeah. I went upstairs and I said, Dad, I have something to tell you. And he looked at me like so concerned. And I told him, I'm not pregnant. That was no. the first thing I told him. <laughs> well, and then he, he, he put his headphones back on, kept working. <laughs> he kind of laughed at it. And I said, I had a, I, I just got into a motorcycle accident. But I feel good. I, I said, I, I don't, I don't have any pain. Yeah. And, and, and he said, okay, if you feel good, let's wait for your mom. So we'll take you to the hospital. Yeah. It was half an hour later. And you were in pain. I couldn't walk. Yeah. Because of the pain. Because your adrenaline, oh, your adrenaline yes. keeps you going. That's a See, good technique, by the way, that Patrice used for kids. You, you should always start off with like, "I'm not pregnant." <laughs> Something like way worse. Yeah. If you're in trouble. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I do remember like when I was gonna, moving. I remember the day it was. It was January second, um, two thousand to nineteen eighty eight when I moved down to Los Angeles. It literally was uh, January. Yeah, yeah. It was the it was the second, um, and. Um, I had a this car that was completely safe if you're only going 30 miles an hour. It was a Corvair. Now this is like what Ralph Nader uh, built his career on as a as a, uh, a what do they call it? A consumer advocate. He wrote the he wrote the book called um, Unsafe at Any Speed, and it was about a Corvair because the Corvair. What happened was he put the engine in the back and it was like an air cooled kind of thing, but it didn't have the stability of like an air cooled Volkswagen. So these things used to flip. Basically, if you tried to turn a little bit and you didn't have like sandbags, they, I mean, these the people used to have to put sandbags in the front of the car oh, to wow. keep this thing because it would lose stability and it was killing a lot of people. And um, and this is a 1961 Corvair. And what it was was it had no seatbelts because back then there was there was no seatbelts mm -hmm. in cars. If you wanted to, some cars maybe have had them, but this one, no. Mm -hmm. So I literally was driving down with all my stuff in the car. And... Um, and luck, thankfully, the thing that saved me was muddy, and I was right on the I five, and um, I there, there was a and it was a really cool looking powder blue car, and I really liked it. You know, it's basically like this post it, you know, kind of powder blue. Anyway, so there was this. Uh, it was pretty windy, so there was this <laughs> like tumbleweed, and I didn't want to scratch my car, so I kind of did this, and I just filled up with uh, gas, so it was really heavy in the mm -hmm. back. So mm -hmm. I went to to turn a little bit to avoid the tumbleweed and it just i lost control like it just, i couldn't i could not control the car just like and i'm thinking what well, ralph nader was right what <laughs> yes. am i doing because in my head i thought he said unsafe at any speed and this is like you know 20 years later so you knew about all this i knew that this like, is an unsafe but i said yeah but this car survived this long it's got to be different i'm just you know you just it was a cool looking mm -hmm. color and and also, it's like we we never think that something bad can happen to us. To us. So and as like, I'm such a good driver. And too. I said, and then I th my first thing is, yeah, I'm a good driver. And then I think, you know what? And now, oh, I'm gonna fuck up my car. It's gonna get fucked up. And then as the car hit the side and flipped, and I go, wait a minute, forget about the car. How about me? <laughs> yeah. And I remember being upside down on the roof of the car, having no control at all. The car is just sliding and sliding for 200 feet. Oh and all I kept saying is, I'm going to be fine. 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 And then the car stopped. And I walked out of it. And I remember I wasn't scared or anything. I dinged my shoulder a little bit on the flip. But um, the, uh, and I didn't, wasn't scared. I walked out of the car and the car was totaled. Hmm. But the car, the, the car it just didn't coll collapse in because it had four doors. So because it was a four door, uh, the trees, basically, I call the tree, like, but separating the front door and the back door on both sides. That's the only thing that didn't collapse. So it was dented in on the front. So mm -hmm. I was like, <laughs> I was just, and um, I remember uh, there was a truck driver, and it was, luckily it was so muddy that it slid. It didn't hit anything solid. It just literally flipped over mm -hmm. and slid to a stop, thankfully. And uh, thank God. So um, a truck driver pulled up and came on and said, Hey, man, can't believe you walked out of that one. Holy shit. Wow. And that's when I said, what, really? He said, yeah, yeah, well, that's a bad one. 
Damn. I say this all the time. I'm like, that's when I'm like, whoa, my baby's scared. Then I had to rent the car because I was going to work the comedy. My first gig in L.A. was working the, uh, the MC at like the Comedy Magic Club or the Middle Act or whatever. Love that place. Yeah, I love it too. I've, I've, I've been playing there ever since for, you know, for 30 years. But um, um, yeah, then I, I had no credit card or nothing. I had to rent the car. I remember I called the place and I said, I'm trying to rent a car. I said, yeah, well, well, I don't have a credit card. You know, click. And I called another place. Okay, I need a credit card. I click. And I said, and finally I called the place. Hey, listen, I don't have a credit card. Will you rent me a car? I said, well, I, said I have cash. I said, how much money you got? I said, I got 300 bucks. He said, uh, I said, okay. I said, well, how much is it going to be? 300 bucks. <laughs> and I went, shit, I should have said 200 bucks. So anyway, and that car was just as unsafe. It was like a Ford Granada, 1975 Ford Granada that I had rented. I go over to the place. It wasn't really even a, um, you know, it wasn't like Hertz or Avis. Right. It was literally a guy who had like a Granada. <laughs> and he sold he sold rugs and he had like fish tanks. That's and, funny. Uh, and I borrowed it. I mean, I literally like gave him 300 bucks and he gave me a Granada wow. and a full tank. And I made it down to L.A. Damn, that's frightening. That's like an Airbnb for... Uh Cars. Yeah. 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 This is 1988. Damn. Before the internet. Okay. I was like Uber, Before but without cars. the Uber driver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> car. With no smell. No smell. <laughs> that's funny. Wow. Well, that's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, here's the thing. Like, my parents were so, um, I would say, strict. Yeah. That I was more scared of getting in trouble, of yeah. getting in trouble than of dying. Seriously, yeah. and I spent—I yeah. remember, like, I spent a, a week at the hospital, and I was just thinking the whole time, rather than thinking like, "Holy shit!" Like, I want to get better. I was just thinking like, "I'm never gonna go out again." Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Were there any? They're reper- never gonna let me. Were there any repercussions from the? Motorcycle? My mom. I gotta say that when I was like literally in so much pain, and they were taking me. Into the hospital to do all the, you know, like the brain uh, Scan. scans and all that shit. Uh, my you got to wait till that comes out clean to yell at your kid, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She everything? was yelling at me the whole, the whole <laughs> fucking no ride to no the way. hospital. The whole time. And she was just like yelling at me like. You're no better than this. Yes. Well, but how did I, it sound in Spanish? But you know what? The, you know, it, was, it was just horrible. But I just think it's because she was so scared. And yeah. she was so crazy scared and nervous mm-hmm. that she was like, I can't believe you did this. He's just like, did you know, didn't say young. see what happens. Yeah, almost. That was, uh, she almost said see she what happens. Said that. She would have said what happens that. in Spanish. What would that be loosely uh, translated? Like, uh, ves lo que pasa? Something like that. Ves it's lo it's que not pasa. as beautiful as see what mm. happens. I think see what happens is better. Mm. But um, anyway, yeah. So see, like now the, uh, that we are parents, yeah. I want to find that... Um, I mean, it's it's a fine line with you know being very strict and your kids being afraid of you. So they because wanna, if you're too strict, so, what happens? So they don't want to tell you things. Yeah, and they hide those things from you, and then it's. But if worse. you're too open with them, if you're too open, I think they 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 you know then you become their friend, and then the same thing happens. Like there's no yeah repercussions. You can't be so it's their a, friend, it's, a, it's yeah. a fine line. What do you guys think about? I'm not not even trying to be funny. Mm-hmm. What do you think about if one parent? Mm-hmm. If you go like a good cop, bad cop, do you think that might work? What if one parent is kind of like you can confide in them a little bit and be a little bit of a friend? The other one is over. It just happens. That's to true. Be you the you know that, I'm in. that might be better. I gotta and say, I rationalize this, look, okay? like my dad, he was a strict, but he wasn't like my mom was a lunatic. Like yeah. my mom would be like yelling. My mom would hit, yell. And uh, for any know. for no reason, or if you guys no, no, she always had a reason. She always had a reason, but uh, but, but, but she was just more extreme, super extreme. And the reason she was like that, to be honest, because she, it it annoyed the shit out of me that sometimes I wanted to go to a party or to this, and my mom would find something to not let me go. So she would be like, "No, you know what? Though your room is messy, because you're not going to be able smart. to go." And she knew she knew that that's like potentially uh, uh, not a good situation for you but exactly but it but it that's what it upset me so much back then because i didn't understand because yeah. i think if she would have explained like look i don't want you to go you know so that because but you because, wouldn't have listened back then either no but but the you problem don't trust is like me, mom yeah yeah i had a bunch of those like you don't trust me and then she was like i don't trust the people around you mm-hmm. right which is true but yeah. ha- however what yeah. it like pissed me off so much back then is because it was instead of her saying look i'm scared for you 
or I'm afraid you can get into a pro or trouble or blah, blah, blah. She put it on me. So she was like, because you have this room disorganized, you're not going because then next time it was organized and then she would find something else. Oh, I know. And I would be like, what the fuck? Yeah. I know. But you know what, though? The, there was no win for her. Mm -hmm. There was no way that she was going to say where you go, oh, you're right. Good point. I should have straightened my room. Or you're right. I shouldn't have straightened my room. Or you're right. Uh, I can't be trusted. <laughs> yeah. It is so, tough. So you have so to, it that's is tough. A, so I think it's, uh, we, we can find that. Because my dad was way better at that. He would explain things to me. Mm -hmm. And you know the thing about my dad? Like he never, ever, not once hit, it, hit me. Mm. Ever. Mm. I can't say or, the same. Or yelled at me. Ever. No, like my mom was would, a terror. He would, he would raise his voice yeah. and say, okay, sit down, we're going to talk. And when he's serious, it's yeah. like, holy shit, this is, that was a scarier awesome. than my mom yelling. Yeah, that's true, because my dad, my dad had an explosive sense of humor. Mm -hmm. An explosive sense of, <laughs> of anger oh. and humor. <laughs> but like, but he did like, when he would explode, he really would explode. He, he saw a therapist in like the, in the early 70s or late 60s. There was this thing called like, John Lennon did this like screen therapy. And he just said, "Hey, you got to get angry. You got to get this thing out, or it's going to kill you. You got to let." So, so he, he, you never know what would set him off, and he would just blow up. And I swear to God, I remember one time when I was seven years old, I was playing chess with them. I'll never forget it. And I was like, um, you know, uh, just playing, and I noticed he moved the piece. You know, it's like, hey, he just cheated. You can't move two times. He said, eh, I'll just keep playing. And I went, no, but you cheated. I was joking. Around, you cheat? You can't cheat like that? What do you mean? Wait, 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 well, why don't I get two moves? And, and I, the next thing I know, the pieces and the whole board is flying over my head and flying and hitting, and he just got up and like walked out. Holy shit. I find it very interesting that you're a kid and your dad is cheating at chess. <laughs> at seven, I was very good already. Hey, you must have been. I was. I, he was a champion. I know. Cause, in chess. Because my kids cheated. When he was Uno. a kid, my kids cheated. Kid. Uno. I've never been like you know. Fuck these kids. I'm gonna take two cards. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, my dad had an explosive, uh, you know, temper. He did. Damn. It's very funny too. Very funny. Explosive laughter. Explosive anger. After and, that, he blows up. Yeah. How does that resolve? Does he ever come back? No, and go, I'm sorry, or is no, it just he, no. It just, just we just pretend it didn't happen. And you know what? The whole time after that happened, I said, I, I was sitting there by myself. Why did I have to say that about him Damn. cheating? I should have just let him cheat. It would have been just so easy. Just let him. Just let him cheat. Why did I have? But to? you know what? I don't think it had anything to do with you. Yeah, no, of course. But you're seven years old. You're always going to blame yourself. Of course. Wait, Your well, loses, no matter what age you are, I, I think said, we're I, always going to blame chess. ourselves. With my hero, my dad, I could have enjoyed it. And all of a sudden, because I said I was teasing him, or I didn't even call it teasing because I called him on his yeah. cheating. On his cheating. <laughs> you cheated because I saw him just with his pinky move, move one of his palms over. Wow. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> That's amazing. He really wanted to be a seven-year-old. But I just remember, like, I don't remember a lot from, like, so. in, in a way, I'm grateful that I have that memory of him because... You know, it really, it's just kind of like, there's some certain things that just hit to your cerebral cortex and it's forever. And like, Imprinted. Yeah. 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 That's, that's there. It's like a, you know, it's a smack. Well, or well, usually it's that. If you if you try to think of the, like, super happy moments, there are fewer than the moments that are either scary yeah. or sad or, like, like impress it, it, you. Yeah, but whatever, I my drowning and my wedding day. <laughs> <laughs> I do, like... Uh, like my dad telling jokes and laughing so hard that he couldn't uh, get through the joke. Uh, that I remember. Mm -hmm. But it's another extreme, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah, my dad, he's very patient. Super patient. Yeah. But I got to say, when he gets upset. Oh, yeah, he and, goes. Like, yeah. then he, like, he never what, what, did what it What was the me. thing that set him off? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Can but, we have a hint? What's a hint? Was it, did he get off? Was, did he blow up at you as your brother? No, with me never. Yeah. With Christian, I think I think he probably uh, a couple times hit Christian once only. Okay. No, because also look, the thing about my dad is like he had a uh, violent dad, so his okay. dad would All beat right. him up and and his brother. So that makes so him not my dad do said that. I don't want to do that, so he didn't do it. However, if my dad gets to the point that he's really pissed, yeah. It looks like he's gonna freaking kill you because I remember that. I mean, not to me, you <laughs> not know. Like to he laugh, never. He, I, just, he, I can't imagine your dad. Exactly, being that he's like so a sweet man. It's the sweetest, but but imagine the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. It would be really scary. I think the scariest people is not the ones that they yell so, at yeah. you all the time, but the ones that don't do it, and when they do it, it's like holy shit. <laughs> right. I remember I went on this on yeah. this um, uh, field trip. 
Yeah. At you know when I was in college, and my dad went to pick me up, and he got so upset because in the you know like the school bus didn't get inside of the parking lot, and they dropped us off outside of the school. He lost his mind, and I remember he was yelling and and, and talking so like horribly to the um, bus driver. Know, no, not to the bus driver, the but to my uh, yeah, the guy who was in in charge of my whole. Um, you know, mm-hmm. um, how do we go? Like the like the, the principal, but for each um, career, I don't, I don't even know what's the name of that. But anyways, it's like, it was like a coordinator, like mm-hmm. a career coordinator or something like that. A career principal. Let's call it career <laughs> principal coordinator. No, what is that? It's a different, it's come on, let's come career on. career principal bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it? No, no, no. We call, it, we call, it, we call, it, we call no, it. No, it's a different section of, it's a different, uh, well, it's a different study. So it would be the, a different part of the school. Come on, Jamie. Different. For instance, look, I think it was oh, the, a coordinator. The department because, head? Department. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank Fucking you. Crushed Good it. Yes. Lord, you're the r- professional radio person here. Crushed yeah. It. So anyways, he, he, came, he came to me, this guy, which was also, you know, like a guy, like same age than my dad. And he said, I think your dad is so upset that he's going to beat me up. And I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and why was he upset? Because it was dangerous. Because to it's dangerous. Guys outside? No, I found out later. See, it's like we th- we have these ideas of what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I think you can get, get angry get if, really it's, if it's like danger. He he thought it was very dangerous. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then, but that was not the main reason. Oh, that's not. No. See, that would be the only reason I no. would lose my shit. No, he w- he thought it was dangerous. But I was also in college. It's not like they're dropping off a five year old outside of school. Okay. You well, know? That, okay. So the, I was, the, what I was, was a, it then? I was an adult already. He was watching a movie, <laughs> and he had to leave the house to pick me up, <laughs> and then we were late. Oh, because he planned. My dad is a planner, right? Yeah, so yeah. he planned like, okay, I'm gonna go pick her up, and then we're gonna come back, and I'm gonna be able to finish this movie because mm-hmm. it was one of those TV movies that they were showing. Oh yeah, so you couldn't pause it. <laughs> he couldn't pause it, so he picked me up, and we took like an extra forty minutes to get there. And then they drop us out of the school, so that was he lost his shit right there. Oh, yes! Wow, missed, he missed that movie. He never. He knows missed how it the ends. movie. What was the movie? I want to get it for him. I don't know. You got to find out. I'm gonna find out. I want to get. He that probably doesn't even remember. But uh, God. You know, I think it's like a Stallone movie, Ram- Rambo: First Blood, <laughs> because you, you can't miss too much of that movie. Without... But you know what? Though? But again, he fell out of the tree. <laughs> I didn't see him land. <laughs> But I think it's the same thing. Actually, with your I know dad. he's in the river, huh? He, uh, probably there was someone going on that day with your dad when he was playing chess with you that he was just like thinking about it, and yeah. then I think he so. lost his mind over one thing because yeah, that was like a, the uh, drop. So true. She's so right. There must. Who knows what? Think about yeah. now that you're a parent. All the things you're thinking about sometimes when you're playing with your kids, especially yes. when yeah. it slows down and you're playing chess. Who knows what was going on? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I wish I would have asked them. You know, it's one of those things, like you know, and then they're gone. Like mm-hmm. my dad's gone, and yeah. Your dad's gone, and I, I it's just like so many things. I wish I could have asked him, but at the same time, I don't want to embarrass him, right? But I'm so curious, like, wow, wow, you lost your shit that time, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. But I, I wouldn't want to bring it up and make him feel bad. He's such a sweet guy. I just, uh, I just wish there was more stories and more times I could have asked him more stuff and more times, you know. But uh, hey, your dad's still around. Yes, so. and I enjoy it so much. He's so helpful. God, he's so you know the best thing for for me enjoying your dad is seeing when the kid when he comes over here and the kids run to him mm-hmm. like Abu Lincoln mm-hmm. and they just and you see the smile on his face like of course they're happy to see me. <laughs> 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 That's the best because yeah. he earned that. Yes. They're not faking that. No. Not and to- I feel like he's softer now because when I grew up like he was super patient. Yeah. But he was never like a, like a hugger, you mm-hmm. know, or he wouldn't even tell you I love you mm-hmm. unless he had to. But, uh, <laughs> unless you're tied down and forced. <laughs> unless you're unless dying. Open up your mouth. Unless unless you're say it. Unless say you're it. dying at the hospital. You know? Right. Or he's holding a script and that's his line. No. <laughs> no, my my friend who passed away in uh, in uh, October. I still can't believe Scott Wilson's gone. My buddy. God, I loved him. And uh, but I got to tell him I loved him. I got to see him in the hospital. And I didn't think I still because I thought oh, he's going to get over this. He has to. There's still mm-hmm. a chance, right? And you don't think. But but I remember we looked at each other. You know, said, hey, I love you. And I was like, oh, man, I love you. And uh, that's the last time I ever saw him. So it was wow. a, that was a beautiful thing that, like, you know, for two men who are, you know, um, 
mature enough or to say comfortable enough that you can just Mm -hmm. tell another man in in front of a bunch of nurses i love you (laughs) no but it it was just i mean it's just nice to have that but i also do think that er, earlier in life i just think it takes a while they say that and you say this and i don't know if it's true but you say that your hemispheres melt in your 40s in your brain what does that mean Mm -hmm. like the left and right Yes. Well, like that. There's like that that kind of machismo bullshit. I think that that men are um, built, yeah, built to do to survive for whatever reason or whatever. It after a while, it just it disintegrates and melts, and you become you start watching Italian movies and <laughs> going, "I'm happy, right?" And going like, "Yeah, you know, supposedly that was the, the, uh, I didn't say that. Like, first of all, it was this woman who. Did a whole uh, research on how the female... Yeah, a the, woman trying the, to tell a guy how he's mm. supposed to feel. No, no, no. Uh, she did the research on how the brain works. Mm-hmm. You misogynist, <laughs> a-hole. No, it's just... She, she trying did to tell this. me that my hemispheres are <laughs> she, melting. Let me tell you something, bitch. <laughs> you, got, you got one hemisphere now. Yeah. That makes no sense. No, but supposedly, yes, it starts like melting. Okay. Not well, melting, not but... Melted, that, but like the... Um, is um, your ideas and all that shit, you know, like the, that you build up, like, oh, I'm such a much, you know, macho man. Let's just say the separation male. becomes less. Let's just say, like, there's like. Yes, a, like you allow yourself to be more emotional. But it's a, from a physiological place, though. Like wow. your brain does yeah. have changes. Mm-hmm. Well, saying, I see it with my dad, seriously. Like, I see how, you know. It's beautiful because you never. How s- he hugs my kids and kisses, kisses them. Even, even me or my brother, you know, like he gets, he got more affectionate. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, and I don't think he didn't do it because he didn't love us. I just don't think he ever had it, so yeah. he didn't really know how to do it, and he mm-hmm. he felt a little awkward, maybe or like embarrassed even to do it. Yeah, well, don't you feel like too? You also get to like I was thinking about stuff. You probably get to like try it again when mm-hmm. your kids have kids. Yeah, like oh, you yeah. think back and go, oh, I wished I had hugged. Oh, your, dude, you my mom is like she was such a witch when she was my mom, and seriously, like she's so loving with the kids and like. I Who's know. that one? Who's that faker? I know, yeah. <laughs> I know. I felt the same way with my mother. Yeah. Uh, well, but I think she's still a faker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I do think so. But I do think it was just a different thing, whereas it's uh, survival, yeah. which is a different thing. No, she also has her reasons. She starved obviously. during the war. Both her brothers died during... It's, it's a different animal. I mean, different yeah. different experience that we'll never know. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, yelling at us for not... You know, for wasting food because I starved in the war. It's like, good lord, the war is over. What would you guys do at an all-you-can-eat buffet? Just, I mean, <laughs> going back. go back. Wow, you can, they just keep bringing. They keep filling it up. I remember one of my <laughs> earliest moments. My mother's, my mom yelling at me when we were at a buffet. It was a three. It was all-you-can-eat buffet. It was an all-you-can-eat <laughs> really? buffet, three dollars. Damn. It was in Kauai. That's when I was like, meat. I was like eight, nine years old. Because again, you know, my grandfather lived in Hawaii, so we'd go there and. Uh, and then I remember we were in Kauai, and uh, it was an all-you-can-eat, and uh, she yelled at me because I was only eating <laughs> papaya. <laughs> You're only eating papaya. It's three dollars. You go back and you get some meat. You go back and get some eggs. Your money's worth. It's three dollars. We're spending three dollars here. You go back and get some meat. Don't eat only papaya, because papaya were like you know falling off the trees. <laughs> Like you no, ate the only thing that was available outside the restaurant. Yeah, you could basically you could, you could pick up a dozen outside. They were just they were, papaya was like a weed in that island, you know. Yeah. So you know, we think papaya. Yeah, but I, that's what I want to eat. You go back in there, you get some eggs. Yeah. Well, get some meat. Three dollars. <laughs> See what happens. See what, but but again, see like it, that was it's, her it's, experience. It's her experience, and it's the repetition of it. Oh, yeah. And no. sometimes, you know, like, I feel like... Her war stories were, like, incredible. Yeah. Like, my mom also, you know, she had some very sad stories from her, from her childhood. And I think now we have more ways of learning. Yeah. There are books about how to get rid of trauma or mm. how to, you know, like, overcome your past or what you were talking about, you know, like, focusing um, on the present. But for them, oh, there no. was no information. And also... They were focusing was, on the present. And, and the present was, was not something that they really wanted to focus yeah. on and, and and it was embarrassing for my mom seriously when i said mom you want to see a therapist for her it's embarrassing because she's like there's nothing that, wrong with me there's nothing wrong with me. that person is gonna think i'm, I'm not crazy mm-hmm. it's like no you don't have to be crazy yeah. to go to a therapist you know you just have to get over yeah because they're not judging things. you I mean, well, they are. Let's be honest. Let's but they're, be they're honest. Not, they're pretending that they're told not to. But what it is, it's um, 
Well, what I what I really feel like it should be, which is, is somebody reorganizing the thoughts and and giving you a chance to question the the values that you're mm-hmm. really putting on it, as opposed to uh, and, and give you the opportunity to reassess mm-hmm. what you're giving putting value on, what yeah. you're putting your uh, attention to, and what uh, and usually what it's really about in every situation is a uh, guilt and avoiding pain. Yep. And 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 guilt is of some in some way uh, is also associated to like in, in my mind you know avoiding pain it's all avoiding pain it's a pain avoidance is every mental illness I remember the first time I heard that it's so like, weird guilt and avoiding pain is the name the name of my memoir <laughs> it's so weird you said that <laughs> no but it is every every mental illness every one of will do it mm-hmm. and we'll, we'll, and then I think we should probably leave it at that yeah but hey, it, go to therapy. See what All happens. of you guys, and see yeah. what happens because it's see what happens say, in therapy. It's amazing, and you could do this text therapy, right? Yes, I love yeah. it. Talk space, I tried and I loved it. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. I haven't done yeah, it yet. It's really good. I'm gonna do it. It That's worked nice. for me, but I don't need. It didn't it. work for you that well, but it. it no, I had mixed. I had mixed. Uh, well, you have to have somebody good. Results. You're texting somebody. You turned yeah. out the person you were texting ended up not really being a real. No, no, it was That's it my was fear. a therapist. But by texting some like you know guy who's like a landscaper. Dude, I can't help you with that one, brother. No, I, I had a good, a really good one, and I felt like you know well, it also, really helped me. Yeah, it did to help understand at, a bunch of things. But but at the same time, though, you were in a place where like I'm ready to like deal with. So I I think like people mm-hmm. go when they're ready because even yeah. if you start, you know, like you might have a better experience now. You know? Can I tell you a super quick dumb story? But yeah. like with my therapist, always. I made the mistake of. Mm-hmm. As we got, that's why I think I need Sleeping a therapist with them. in LA. It's always a mistake to sleep with a therapist. <laughs> but it was like she was, you know, she was right in front of me. It was but, like, so what? What was the mistake? So the mistake was, mm-hmm. and I think if I saw a therapist in LA, it would be so much better. I said something about us having exactly what you were talking about earlier in the podcast. I said a thing about us having a show on Netflix. All these things are going great, and it's like I don't feel like I got exactly what I wanted. But yeah. I'm feeling like this sadness or whatever the hell. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you have a show on Netflix? Oh, my God. That's like the... And she just... Turned into a fan? Yeah, and couldn't get over. I know. That happened. She was almost convinced that that should make me happy. And it ruined everything. And I should, she was oh, yeah, good yeah. until that point. Mm. And she was like, are you working with Rob Schneider today? I mean, are you... Like, just mm-hmm. super excited. She wouldn't watch the show. It ruined everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you're right. But yeah. there, there is this weird... That's, well, that's not professional. That isn't. But there's this weird thing about like... Uh, the perception that you see, if you put a value on something like if I get that, then then I need this. If you say you need, you're coming from a place of lack. Mm, so I you're need to you're get com- to third place. You're coming. <laughs> you're always coming at something like, well, I don't have. I if I get that, it'll be this will make uh, that means I'm coming. I don't have it. So the idea that you don't have everything is is just again an illusion. It's a choice. You know, it is a because you can't take anything with you anyway, and it's all temporary, and it's all so the, the it's like. But what it is again, it's not that things things can't make you happy or things don't have some 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 value to you. But if you uh, a proper value, or should say a another way of looking at it, because if what if it gets taken away, then you're not. You're not feeling good again, or right. or what? Uh, somebody else who has it feels your goodness, or what feels your happiness. So it, again, what, what what all that should be is just to uh, hopefully should just reassess and give you the opportunity to not swing out, or to just to have the choice. That's your choice to whether to swing out or not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, and if you do, see what happens. <laughs> and so we'll catch you again. Thank you. So where are we going to find uh, Jamie Lisso? Where are your I'll be in it. I'll, I'll, I'm at I am Jamie Lisso yeah. on Instagram and right. uh, Boss Round LA doing doing spots. Nothing uh, on the road. Mm-hmm. And then we're working on uh, a, a show, which we'll talk about next time. Yeah, our next absolutely. And, the, and we're going to be. Uh, uh, let me see. If where are can. you going to be at Love? Where am I going to be? Love of my life, light of my world. Well, where, where do we get? What are we get a hold of of you? Oh, you can Patricia find me Schneider. on Instagram. I am Patricia Maya. Yeah, and that's the that's the one that I use the most. Nice. Okay, mm-hmm. and we're gonna see. Oh, you got to be doing some other some more uh, cooking thing. You got a hundred hundred forty thousand people saw you cook that beautiful uh, seafood. Uh, wasn't it wasn't really it was like a, a bisque. Uh, what was it? No, it was a seafood uh, pasta. Mm, beautiful. I it tried it, but it was awesome. All right. Now, August 30th, August 31st, Ontario Improv, Ontario, California. September 27th, the Hard Rock Casino, Vancouver, B.C. 
Come see Rob Schneider at the Mont Blue Resort and Casino, State Line, Nevada. October 4th. October 5th, Sally Tomatoes, Rohnert Park. One show, California, Rohnert Park. October 6th, Blue Lake Casino, Blue Lake, California. This October 11th, 12th, and 13th, I will be in New York City, Manhattan, at Caroline's on Broadway. New York, New York. Caroline's, October 11th, 12th, and 13th. Uh, and if you don't have your uh, pen and paper right there, uh, or, uh, you know, you're driving in your car there, uh, just go to robschneider.com. Check it out. Okay? How do you feel about these? How do you feel about doing the podcast, by the way? I love the podcast, and I yeah. feel... This is one of those moments, this is going to sound stupid, but this is one of those moments where I feel like I don't need anything else. Like oh, it's great. like a, a happy spot. Mm. Just happy to be a part of it. That's good, buddy. Well, good. I, you know, because the main thing about when you're doing that, when we did our TV show, which was really fun and everything, was like, you got to remind yourself, like, if I'm not enjoying this, why am I doing this? Yeah. Or why... If I said I needed this, I was going to enjoy this. I'm really excited. And then why aren't I enjoying this? I said, uh, you know, that's one of the things you don't want to. I should have had more fun. <laughs> you know? right. hey. I'm enjoying this. Enjoy it. Enjoy. Yes. It's Let's fun. enjoy. Enjoy those. That's what's great about those little kids. I, just, I can't mm-hmm. wait to just grab her. I know. I love it. The most sweetest thing she says to me. Mm-hmm. It's so beautiful. That's my favorite thing. She knows. She really likes to say because she knows it makes me laugh. Mm-hmm. When our two-year-old, our little Madeline, she says she wants to be called Madeline Robbie, right? No? Madeline. Madeline. Madeline Robbie. Oh, so beautiful. She says to me, "Calm down, Dad. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> calm down." But she says it the right way. Like, calm down. Wow. Calm down. I'm gonna use calm her to say that down. to you when I'm scared to. She says. <laughs> Calm down now. Now, calm down now. Calm That's down. Because when I'm trying to grab her and tickle her and, you know, just pick her up, I just don't want to squeeze you. You should try to calm, calm down. Calm down now. Now, calm down. Calm down. I know I'm fun. I'm calm down. Uh, calm down. I'm too. Calm down. I know. And I just want to grab her and squeeze her. And she's just like, calm down. I'm only too. You just told me how to survive a riptide. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love it. I love them. All right. So see what happens when you have kids? See what happens? The best things you don't get, ever. You don't get to sleep, but then you're happy. Oh, best thing. Happy ever. every who day. Needs, who needs sleep? You get, the rest, you get the rest of your turn to sleep. Enjoy yourselves. Be happy. And, uh, and hopefully we'll see you again. Because when you do, see what happens. 